What's up, everyone? This is Greg with SportsRevExpert.com, and you'll hear a lot of arguments about is pronation bad? Is pronation good? How do we determine what is over pronation? Because there's no because there's no set value or who determines what is over pronation and what is an adequate amount of pronation. The problem with all of these talks is we're trying to get too nuanced with the issue. It doesn't need to be nuanced. We need to just understand that there's a certain degree that is optimal and anything that deviates away from that isn't necessarily bad, but it becomes less and less optimal the further and further we deviate away from that norm or the intended ideal. Now I'm well aware of the fact that many athletes will quote unquote over pronate and many athletes at high level do this very well and do this repetitively throughout their career. So there is this argument out there that will state that, well, if high level athletes can do that at the highest level and perform some of the greatest feats known to mankind, then is it really a bad thing? But then again, this brings up the conversation of just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should. And that's what this video is trying to answer. And realize that any athlete, whether they're an average Joe weekend warrior or a high level Olympic champion, any athlete is susceptible to an injury. It is impossible to mitigate every single injury. But what we can do is study how injury occurs and make informed decisions based upon that observation. And when we look at the injury of an Achilles rupture, it is undeniable that this happens in a position where the foot and the ankle collapse into a position of pronation. Now, again, we can try to quantify that, but I'd argue it's going to be next to impossible to try to quantify what would be considered over pronation. So we need to just understand that the further we dive down into pronation, the more and more at risk we become for a potential rupture, especially when we put the tendon through a lot of dorsiflexion. You can see it video after video after video. The heel is moving down, the knee is straightening, and the foot is over pronating because it's moving into a position of dorsiflexion. You need to understand that this is not how we move forward. If we moved forward, what will occur is the heel will be lifting up, the knee and the torso and the body will be moving forward, and you'll actually achieve a position of resupination. Athletes who do this very, very well actually have a significantly less degree of pronation that will occur. Now, if we actually apply research to looking at movement and actual observation of how injury occurs, what we can see is that there's actually a twist or a turn that occurs into the Achilles and how it's sewn into the human body, which means there's a directional preference in which the Achilles and the shape that the Achilles likes to be in in the shape that the Achilles does not like to be in. Simply speaking, and looking at it from an analogy standpoint, if we look at the tying in of a rope, there's a certain direction that you turn the rope, and the rope becomes more tight or taut, and if you turn it in the opposite direction, the rope starts to unravel. Now this isn't a perfect analogy because our body has the ability to adapt and become more resilient because it is muscle tissue, it is living tissue. Rope is not living tissue but it does a great job of showing the importance of position and shapes that the body prefers to be in. I'm not saying there's an exact value to what that shape is or exact measurement to that shape. I'm just saying it's on a spectrum of good and bad and you can either be moving towards ideal or you can be moving away from ideal. Tendons elongate and create stiffness to absorb force. They do not unravel to absorb force. Unraveling of a tendon is not how we absorb force and transmit force. We need to keep tension in that tendon and then work on rate of force development and force absorption through elongation and eccentric activity, which is different than unraveling. One is tension. The other is unraveling. There is a very big difference in that terminology and how it's going to impact the human physiology. So again, you can't go wrong with getting strong. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. But which position would you rather put your Achilles in? Type it in the comments below. You let me know. We'll see what everybody else says.
But I can gather after watching this video, again, you can see my opinion on the nature that there is an ideal position and anything that strays away from that ideal is just a varying degree of right or wrong. There is no exact measurement and a precise amount or a precise value of what is correct and what is incorrect. But depending on how far you stray towards either end of that spectrum, you're moving either towards the ideal or away from the ideal. In which direction would you rather be going? And if we extrapolate the fact that this is the position of ruptures, then we can also understand that if I do this repetitively, maybe I don't rupture a tendon, but it would make perfectly good sense of why someone might also have tendonitis or tendinosis in that tendon if they repetitively do this on a low level over the course of many different days, training cycles, runs, athletic events of that nature. But then we'll get people citing resources, citing articles that again say, well, you need to train the position of injury to become stronger in the position of injury to resist injury. But my counter argument to that is, well, if this athlete's been doing it their whole life, I would imagine that they would be pretty strong in that position. Do they really need to do more strength training in that position? Actually, if you watch a lot of people do heel raises, you'll see them do it in this position because they don't know how to control the dexterity of the foot to avoid this position or limit the degree that they move into this position. But again, simple observation will tell you that if the solution was just to get stronger in that injured position because many athletes do this position over and over again, would it not make sense that these athletes would have an obscene amount of strength in that position? So why are we still seeing more and more Achilles ruptures over the course of time? Why are we still seeing tons and tons of people complaining about Achilles tendonitis and Achilles, Achilles tendinosis and missing time in their sport or their uh, recreational activities going for runs because they because they're having painful experiences from tendonitis and tendinosis to their Achilles and plantar fascia. Moving efficiently in a manner that does not predispose you for injury is a form of load management. You don't necessarily always have to take a break, take a rest, sit out a game or two to load manage a tendon. Athletes never sat out for load management in the past and yet injury rates continue to be on the rise more and more. So there are other factors that are causing these injuries and we need to take into consideration how biomechanics and how movement efficiency in locomotion tasks is one of those factors. And the answer isn't simply just get stronger. Because if it was, strength and conditioning would have solved all of the world's problems by now and we know for a fact that that has not occurred. So stop accepting the fact that you need to just rest more. Stop accepting the fact of, oh, I just need to get stronger. Start understanding how to move and combine all of these factors into an ideal scenario for you and put together that in a plan of action. That's what we do at Sports Rehab Expert. That's how we help people is we help them understand all the different influences that could be impacting their painful experiences or previous injuries, and we help them overcome that issue. And if you would like help with that, then you can reach out to me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com. We have a few different options for you, whether that's the DIY do-it-yourself version of our workouts and our injury rehab protocols, or if that's a one-on-one -on -one consult with me through Zoom and developing an exact plan of action for you. Again, email me, greg at sportsrehabexpert.com, and we can discuss what the price is and what that might look like for your particular scenario. Just give me a little bit of background on the issue, and I'll be happy to get back with you as soon as possible.